Blood flow through the skin, or the cutaneous blood flow, is one of the main factors that helps us to control our body temperature. It's essential for keeping temperature in the range that's needed for the body's metabolic processes to function correctly. So, when we get too hot, changes in skin blood flow help to cool us down. And when we get too cold, changes in skin blood flow helped to heat us up. Blood flow to the skin varies hugely, from less than 1% to over 30% of cardiac output. It depends on the body's need to either lose or conserve heat, and it's driven by changes in temperature both inside and outside the body. The blood vessels in the skin have a specialised structure and function that help the body to lose heat when it's hot and conserve heat when it's cold. When the body needs to cool down, vasodilation in the skin diverts blood from its warm core to the skin where it can lose heat. In contrast, the constriction of cutaneous vessels keeps blood within the warm body core, preventing heat loss from the skin's surface. Blood arriving under the skin in arteries enters the smaller arterioles, which transport the blood through the dermis. From there the capillaries distribute the blood throughout the epidermis. Blood then leaves the capillaries to enter the venules, from where the veins transport it to the heart for reoxygenation. So far, this process seems like any other circulation. But the cutaneous circulation has an additional mechanism for maximising the distribution of blood to the skin when it's hot. First of all, notice that the venules running through the dermis are actually a plexus or network of veins. In addition, there is a direct connection between the arteries and the venous plexus known as the arteriovenous anastomosis. In cold temperatures, these anastomoses are closed, but when heat loss is needed, the anastomoses open and a large volume of warm arterial blood can immediately invade the venous plexus, rapidly increasing the amount of blood next to the skin surface. The anastomoses are composed of smooth muscle and can be regulated in the same way as the smooth muscle of the main blood vessels. Ambient temperature is detected by temperature receptors known as thermoreceptors in the skin. They are located on somatosensory nerve endings with separate neurons sensing hot or cold. The sensory neurons penetrate close to the surface of the skin and send signals to the hypothalamus in the brain. Thermoreceptors are cation channels of the transient receptor potential or TRP family, which when activated depolarize the neuron. Cold is detected by TRIP-M8 ion channels. These channels are also activated by menthol, which explains why menthol can evoke a sense of cooling when applied to the skin. Heat is detected by TRIP-V1 receptors, which can also be activated by capsaicin, the molecule in chilli peppers that gives them their heat. The hypothalamus is the central regulator of temperature. As well as detecting sensory inputs from the periphery of the body, it also detects core temperature from the blood flowing through it. The hypothalamus is also an integration and control centre for the autonomic nervous system, which is the main regulator of blood flow to the skin. The hypothalamus adjusts the autonomic output to promote constriction of the arterioles and anastomoses when it is cold and dilation when it is hot. The arterioles and anastomoses in the skin are highly sensitive to vasoconstrictors, including noradrenaline, also known as norepinephrine, which is the transmitter released from sympathetic neurons. 
nor adrenaline can constrict these vessels to the point of obliteration. In extreme cold, the prolonged obliteration of vessels in the extremities can lead to frostbite and eventually tissue necrosis and gangrene. Skin blood flow can also be regulated by local mediators. Examples include histamine and bradykinin, which cause the redness and swelling associated with inflammation and itchy rashes. If you cut or graze your skin or have an allergic reaction to something, mast cells in the skin release histamine and trigger the formation of bradykinin, which activates both vasodilation and increased vascular permeability. The latter leads to edema or swelling in the skin. Whatever the colour of your skin, it varies depending on the amount of blood in the venous plexus. When the anastomoses are open, driving arterial blood into the plexus, skin has a redder appearance, such as when you blush.